ish is bananas. B A N A N A S. Hello, and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today, we are going to be making something that we hadn't really planned on making, but we had leftover gingerbread. We had almost everything else we needed to make it. I happened to buy bananas at the store and they were about to go a little bit too ripe for me. Um, so we're making this at night, which we rarely do, but uh, we're gonna make this and we're gonna eat it tomorrow. So this'll be fine. We are making Benoffi Trifle at River Run. So from the Outlander Kitchen Cookbook. Now, um, as far as being time appropriate, this was not a thing in the uh, 1800s and it was not yet a thing for much of the uh, future part of Outlander um, until a little bit later. I don't want to spoil anything if you're just watching the series, um, but this was created the Banoffee pie was created in England by apparently two restaurateurs in 1971. It's a big thing in England. Um, the stars of the Outlander show have a thing about it, like they banter about it um, because the person who plays Claire really likes it. Um, so Banoffee is a uh, combination of banana and toffee. So. Uh, it's usually a pie. We're going to be making it a trifle, which is very appropriate, very English, very um, something that they would have uh, would have had back in the you know 1800s, 18, 1700s. Sorry, I, I misspoke about that. Um, anyway, so first we have our gingerbread left over. It's about half of the recipe that we made last time, and um, I've just cut it up. Uh, into half inch cubes approximately. Um, and then we have a bunch of other stuff over here. The bananas, we have some Grand Marnier. You can substitute other things, other alcohols if you prefer, or even orange juice if you want to make this alcohol free. Um, there, it does call for quite a bit of the Grand Marnier. We have some sweetened condensed milk, which is going to go into our toffee portion of the trifle. Um, some brown sugar, some regular sugar, some vanilla, and oh, there's some chocolate that I have to deal with, which I don't think is a usual component of the pie, but I could be wrong. It's, I don't think it's something I've ever had before. Um, and some, some whipping cream, so. But I think that's about it. But what we're gonna do right now is we're, we're going to make the toffee. That's the first thing we have to do. So. So we're doing this, it's not really a toffee, it's sort of a toffee flavored pudding sort of thing. Anyway, because um, toffee is usually sort of thicker, sometimes hard, anyway. Um, so we have, I've melted the butter on the stove. I'm not gonna show you everything on the stove because it's really very simple. I've melted the butter. I'm going to um, add the brown sugar that I have already measured out and this sweetened condensed milk, which is takes a bit to get out of the can always. That'll take me a second. Okay, that's not too bad. That's most of it. So, um, she said to melt the butter over medium heat, which, I mean, I melted it. It's fine. Um, and we're gonna stir all of this stuff together and we're going to put this back, I think, over medium heat. She doesn't say to change it, so I'm gonna put it on medium heat and we're going to boil this and uh, we're going to stir this constantly to keep it from scorching and burning and all of that because there's a lot of sugar in this and we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna go put this over medium heat, we're going to boil it and we're going to boil it 
for one minute, stirring almost continuously. So we will be back when that part is done. All right, so this is what it looks like after it had boiled for about a minute. And now we have to add, uh, I should have made sure this was open, a little bit of our Grand Marnier. This is not all that goes in the recipe, but There we go. So we're gonna stir this in. Nice orange smell there. And you can see that it's still hot. There we go. Now I've got this nice and smooth. I am going to set this aside to cool because um, this needs to be pretty cool before we continue. So I'm gonna put it on my um, granite countertops to sort of let that absorb some of the heat. Hopefully it will cool off faster. That's my plan. And the next thing we make is whipped cream. So. Let me gather the things I need for that. We're ready to make the whipped cream. I've gathered everything. I'm gonna use my hand mixer for that because it takes a while. I'm gonna put my heavy cream, whipping cream in here. And we're gonna add a little bit of sugar to this. You can add more than this if you want. Um, the Gingerbread is not super sweet, um, but that toffee will be pretty sweet. So I am going to currently stick with the amount that she recommends for that. But then you put a lot of vanilla in here, and I feel like it might be a typo. It's so much vanilla. But I'm going to do it because this is what we do here. There we go. And we're just going to beat this to um, on high speed stiff peaks. We want this to be pretty, pretty well be beaten, but not butter. Don't go that far. You won't see most of this because it's very loud. So I tasted it, it's very vanilla, but not off-putting, um, but I did think it was barely sweet, so I added double the sugar that the recipe calls for. So I'm just gonna beat that in now. Our toffee is still kind of warm, but it's not hot anymore. So I'm gonna kind of just leave it here and I think we'll be able to use it. Honestly, I just wanna get this done. Um, but whipped cream, very vanilla whipped cream is done. Um, bananas I'm going to cut as I put this together just so they don't get too brown and oh no we're supposed to toss them we are supposed to toss them so with some of our Grand Marnier so I don't think I will need all of these bananas um, The, the recipe says medium bananas, and these are definitely on the large side. So I'm gonna go with four. So I'll have those back there if I need them, but I'm gonna go ahead and peel and slice these bananas. Okay, sliced all my bananas, and now I need to add some more Grand Marnier. go. And I'm just going to toss that around with my spoon. But other than that, we are now pretty much ready to put this together. 
Oh, I do need to tell you, um, this also calls for chocolate, um, either good quality, dark or milk chocolate, whatever you prefer is fine, but it calls for a lot of it and grated. So I put mine in the freezer and I meant to do this before, but it was in the freezer for quite a while. Measured it out, put it in the freezer, and I used my um, food processor for that, the grating blade. I would not suggest that. Almost broke my food processor, I'm pretty sure. Still works, still fine. Managed, managed to do it. I've got all my chocolate, so let me grab that. So now I have everything ready, pretty sure. And we're going to layer it in this bowl and it does not look like all this stuff is going to fit in this bowl but she says a large um a, a trifle dish or a large glass bowl with this so uh, this is this is what i have it's not all gonna fit all right so we've had some discussion about the bowl and we don't think it's big enough to hold all of this stuff and the other bowl that we have is not nearly as pretty and he says it's not that much bigger anyway i'm gonna make this one work uh but that means that i'm going to have to be a little go a little bit against the recipe because i don't think it will all fit in here so but it does seem like it's about the same size as the one she has in her book so Anyway, putting some of the uh, gingerbread down at the bottom, I'm supposed to go for a single layer. I'm just kind of trying to make it fit the whole bottom here. And if, if your bowl is big enough, you're supposed to use about half. But, all right. And now I'm supposed to put some Grand Marnier on this to soak it. Um, I'm not going to put quite as much as she says because I feel like I have way less gingerbread to soak than half. So we're going to go with that much. That should be fine. Um, well, maybe, no, we're going to do, do like one and a half. There are a couple pieces, but other than that, it looks pretty soaked. It looks pretty good. So we have got our gingerbread in here, and then we spread with some of the cooled toffee, which is kind of hard to spread. feel like I got about a quarter of my um, gingerbread, so I want to try to do approximately a quarter of this stuff. And no, you cannot spread it, so once it's in there, it's in there. And then um, we put in bananas, so I'm going to try to get a good layer of bananas here and my bowl like many gets a little bit wider after that first layer of um, gingerbread so okay I'm gonna call that good for that. And then uh, chocolate. So we put, I'm gonna get a spoon because otherwise my hand's gonna be super chocolatey. At this point, we put our grated chocolate on top of the bananas. Mine is not grated perfectly, but it'll be And that seems like plenty to me. That's that's a lot of chocolate. This is a lot of chocolate. I can always make use of grated chocolate, however. So we've got our bananas, chocolate, and now some of our whipped cream. And she does say to make sure you spread the whipped cream 
um, all the way to the edges to make sure the bananas are fully covered uh, to keep them from browning. So I think the Grand Marnier will help keep them from browning, but also covering them with this whipped cream. So now we do more of our gingerbread cake. So the last step is to garnish with some chocolate. And I'm not gonna put quite that much on just because I want some of the whipped cream to show, which means there, this, I thought that much chocolate was way too much. And it turns out, I believe I was right. Cause this is a lot of chocolate left over. So we'll be having some hot chocolate later. All right, so you're supposed to, I think cover this. Yeah, well, you're supposed to refrigerate it. I'm probably gonna cover it with plastic wrap just because I want to. I don't want it to dry out on top. Um, but you want to refrigerate it for at least an hour, and she says up to six longer will be fine. Um, so we are going to have this tomorrow, my nice, pretty layers. We'll show you what it looks like when we, uh, when we dish it all out and uh, tell you what we think in just a minute. On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watched me make Banoffee Trifle at River Run from the Outlander Kitchen Cookbook. Um, so this makes a lot of trifle. We had to invite some friends over to help us because um, we made, you know, one relatively large bowl and then had a few, few bits left over and made another smaller bowl um, where we used the creamed crud that we had left over from the gingerbread that we used that was left over for this. We had that left over as well. So we used that in our other, um, our, our sort of leftovers bowl of trifle. Um, and it was a lot. It make, This makes a lot. So just be warned about that. Make this when you have friends coming over, family coming over um, that you want to feed. Because while it is very pretty in its container, once you dish it out, it's not something that you can like send some to the neighbors and it looks at all good. So um, you could also make smaller batches, smaller dishes of it, sort of an individual trifle if you prefer, but um, yeah, it's not something that you can just send to somebody who hasn't seen it and they might think it tastes good because it kind of looks like a mess. Anyway, um, I found there, I think the recipe had a couple of problems. For one, it calls for a lot of chocolate. And I put a lot of chocolate on the layers and I still had more than half left over. So, and it looked a lot less than there is in the picture. So I really feel like you don't need that much chocolate. You can start with half and maybe not even use all of it, but that's okay. We've been using it for other things. It's fine. Um, also, I feel like the vanilla in the whipped cream maybe had a typo. She calls for two tablespoons of vanilla and I feel like it should have been teaspoons because that was a lot of vanilla. It was not, it was not super, it wasn't so much that it tasted bad in conjunction with everything, but it was just a lot of vanilla. And vanilla is very expensive these days, I, but I think it could, you could get away with, you know, switching that to teaspoons and it would probably be fine. Um, I, we felt like the, oh, and there was also not quite enough sugar in the whipped cream for us, especially since the uh, gingerbread is not very sweet. I think I ended up adding a little bit more sugar to that whipped cream as well. Um, but the Grand Marnier and the toffee 
certainly do add a level of sweetness to this. So this is a much sweeter dessert than the gingerbread on its own. Um, the toffee was really easy. I don't know how well it would work to let that cool completely before you start putting uh, make, putting the layers together. Ours was a little bit warm, and then uh, as we went along, it had cooled off some more, and it was just really hard to get out of the pan. Um, excuse me. But once you, if you wanted to warm it up just a little bit on the stove that or in the microwave, if you don't have it in a, still don't still have it in your pan, that would that would be helpful. Um, the Grand Marnier was great. It was a nice um, little bit of an orangey twinge taste to the dessert. Also, I think makes it very much more of a of a Christmassy dessert. I think oranges and 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 gingerbread both are very Christmassy to me. And we really liked it. Actually, with the creamed crud, I think the fact that that was a little bit too salty, not very sweet, putting it in this recipe helped and helped make it a little bit more stable. So that was good. All in all, we really liked this, but if you don't like bananas um, or if you don't like whipped cream, then this is probably not going to be something you really like. But if you like both of those things, um, this is a, a great use for any leftover gingerbread that you have, uh, gingerbread cake. Um, or you can just make a batch and make a huge trifle for a large gathering and it would be great. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching me make this, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and come back and watch me make something else next week.